Hi, my name's Mandy and welcome to my YouTube channel, Pickety Stitch. So welcome back to all subscribers and welcome to new subscribers. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and tap the bell down below so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a video. Okay, so this channel, as most of you know, is about sewing, knitting, crochet and quilting. And I tend to divide the sections up and timestamp, which you can see in the comments below. Uh, so then you'll know which section to skip to if you so wish to do so. And today we're going to start off with the sewing section. So what am I wearing? Um, I'm wearing the Freya top, which is by Tilly and the Buttons. And that's from the book called Stretch. The fabric I purchased last year when I was on holiday in Florida from Hobby Lobby. And it's lovely, really a lovely soft jersey. I'll bring it up a little bit close so you can see. And uh, yeah, I've got quite a few frayers to my collection. And this is one of my favourite ones. So, um, yeah, I've been a little bit um, hesitant to make myself anything this month. For September. Uh, sorry, I did forget to explain that today's date is the 1st of October 2020. So, yeah, I have put that on some lockdown weight, and um, yeah, it's quite a considerable amount. And I know I'm going to lose it, so I didn't really want to make myself any garments that in a couple of months' time I've got to alter again. In fact, I put that much lockdown weight on. I sat on the bed the other day. I've got a duvet on top of the bed. So when I sat down, when I got up, the imprint of my bottom was still on the duvet. And I said to my partner, I said, oh, look at that. And he said he thought it was a crop circle. So <laughs> that just gives you some sort of indication of how much weight I've put on. But hey-ho, let's get on and show you what I have made. Now it's Halloween coming up um, and I know in the UK we now celebrate Halloween a little more than what we used to do in my day. In my day Halloween consisted on looking out the window to see if a witch flew by and that was it. There was no dressing up, there was no tricking or treating. So I thought it might be fun to make my two youngest grandchildren who are three years old, a little boy and a little girl, um, a Halloween outfit so you may recall not so long ago I made a couple of shirts for my grandson at the view a of this McCall's pattern so this is M6548 so I popped along to Holly's Haberdashery which is my local fabric shop in Newcastle under Lyme and I bought some Halloween quilting cotton so yeah this one is as you can see got bats on I've just got pop the buttons on and hem it up I'm classing this as a finished object because that's not going to take me much time to do and I thought that would be a little bit of fun for him so yeah I mean little boys love bats don't they so pretty pleased with that I have found when I've been looking online, because I'm based in the UK, okay, so when I've been looking online, I have found that there's not an awful lot of Halloween fabric at the moment to um, select from. But Holly's Haberdashery has got quite um, a few Halloween fabrics in. So um, I popped along and chose this one for uh, to make my grandson the shirt. And then for my granddaughter, I've, I have made this dress before. It's Butterick 3762. I thought I'd make view D. Um, I perhaps will make it a little bit shorter than um, what the proposed length is. And um, put some black netting, some voile I've got, underneath uh, the skirt to poof it out a little bit and this is the fabric I purchased to make the dress with it's 
again a quilting cotton i'll bring it up close and it's got some spiders webs on it so i thought that would be fun for her although when she looked at it she did seem a little startled but i plan to like i say put some black voile underneath and perhaps a black ribbon sash on to make it a little bit more girlified um so there we go that's my next plan um what i will do because i am going to give them the finished articles um hopefully next week i'll take a photograph uh, of the dress um before i gave it to her what i will say is halloween yes now i remember watching the sewing bee last season and one of the contestants actually said, I don't make children's clothes because they grow out of them very quickly. And I can see a point. However, I just thought it'd be a little bit fun for Halloween. They're not going tricking and treating, obviously, because of the COVID-19. So I just thought it might be a little fun where they can wear their outfits in the day. And um, yeah, I don't think I'd do it again. Because, I mean, obviously it's only going to be a very short-lived outfit because you're not going to be wearing this in November <laughs> or December. But um, I just thought it might be a little bit fun for them. So that's all my sewing projects for this month, I'm afraid. Um, and now we're going on to our knitting section. I have one finished article for the knitting and I'll just take it out and it's the Julinat uh, mittens and this was a pattern I purchased from Ravelry it's Scandia Knits um, you know, I think it's Ali from, yeah so it's from Scandia Knits and that's the Ravelry group I've joined. And these are the mittens. So yeah, one finished article. Now, I have made a couple of mistakes because it wouldn't be me, would it, without making a mistake. As you can see up the side of the mitten, we have these two white stripes and then this navy blue. However, on this mitten, don't know what I did. I've just got um, one white stripe. And I don't know how I've done this. But there I've got a row of navy blue. And I haven't on this one. So they're a little bit odd. Um, I'm very pleased though with the pattern. I think that's really pretty. So I've used three colours. I've used this lovely pale green and, of course, the white and the navy blue. And as you can see, there's lo some lovely fir trees. I think this is a church, a reindeer. And then it sort of mirror images there, this tree does. Uh, so we've got a white tree and then we've got a moon, stars. And I think it's a really pretty scene. On this side um, is a typical sort of, I think it's like a, um, I think it's Latvian or, it's sort of Scandinavian knitting design. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's really pretty and I'm really pleased with that. So these are called the Jewel and Nat Mittens. Um, I have got to block them. So I've got to give them a little wash and blot them. And um, I'm really pleased with them. Now I was going to knit my daughter's some mittens each. Uh, my middle daughter has expressed a, a wish to have some. So what I might do is when I knit her the mittens, I might knit the left one with the blue band there so it's all matching up so those will be a pair and then I'll knit myself another one without the blue um, line of knitting so then it won't look so odd but those are the jeweler nats um, like I say it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry 
I've really enjoyed knitting these. I knit these on um, four uh, double pointed needles, bamboo, and the wool is actually Norwegian. It's uh, Sanders Garn. And these, uh, the, sorry, whew, a bit tongue tied. And the, oh, the range is called Sisu. And I bought these from Scandinavian Knitting Designs. So it's 80% wool and 20% polyamide. So there we go. The jewel and that mitten, mittens. Okay. So then I've got a couple of works in progress to show you. I do love this project bag I made because I made it extra wide on purpose. I like to delve in and get um, my knitting out so I'm not faking around. So this one is a Sirdar pattern and it's 4074 um, a Sirdar pattern. I bought this from eBay. I am knitting this one here. She wanted the one without the collar, but I am knitting it in a white. Well, I say a white, it's a cream colour. So this is the wool. It's 100% acrylic. I am not knitting wool for my grandchildren, uh, pure wool, because I know that these will just get chucked in the, the washing machine. So, um, so let me just take out, and I need to just show you this. So the wool, like I say, is bonus, it's Hayfield bonus double knitting, extra value. And they're in 100 gram balls. And the shade is 0812, they don't have a colour. Okay. So this is the back. So as you can see, it's a raglan uh, shaping. And I like a raglan for children's cardigans. And we have this lovely little lace border and then this little pattern on the main body. I've done the two fronts and then I knit the sleeve. And when I was knitting the sleeve, I was thinking this seems rather long. I mean, the raglan shaping is there. So if I put that against the back, okay, let's put it against this one. As you can see, I just put, sorry. <laughs> um, it's quite a lot longer than the cardigan. And I thought, oh, it did say that I had to knit the sleeve until it was 11 and a half inches. But when I've actually looked at the pattern again, as you can see, the body is quite short, but the sleeves are quite long. So it seems to be knitting, I'm knitting it correctly. And I've just got one more sleeve to knit. And that's how far I have got. I love this little detail around the sleeve cuff as well. That's really pretty. So these are knit, the main part of the knitting is knit on four millimeters. Um, I'm knitting these on my Knit Pro interchangeables. Um, I can't go back to knitting on straight needles now. I just really love um, knitting on circulars, even though it's just back and forth. So there we go. So that's that cardigan. I've only got to do the sleeve now and the you know the the ribbing the bottom band and that's another finished article well that will be another finished article another plan i have is i've purchased this lovely red sparkly wool and i thought that would make a really lovely christmas cardigan for my granddaughter again uh, this is a double knitting. It's Robin. Again, it's acrylic. And the shade is 5724. And I actually purchased this from my local garden centre. So I always get, um, for her size, because she's three, going on four, I just get 200 grams. So I've got two of these. Because I know that will be enough 
to make a cardigan. Oh, just reach across there. So I don't know what's happened, but I moved into this house. Oh, I think it was three or four years ago now. And we haven't completely packed our stuff up. Well, uh, completely unpacked our stuff. So um, just to give you a quick rundown, we have a conservatory built onto this house. Um, it's quite a big conservatory, actually. But it's quite, should I say, I think that might have been built early 80s. It very much looks early uh, 80s, early 90s. And it's in dire need of a revamp. So we've had a conservatory company out. And they were meant to be starting work on the 5th of October. But unfortunately, due to the the virus and everything, workers had to be put back because they cannot obtain all the materials required. So, because what we were hoping is once the conservatory is constructed, re, you know, it's all been redone and we're having a proper roof on this time, we would then ha have our bookcase in there so all my books and knitting patterns and everything seem to uh, still be in storage. So <laughs> I went out to the charity shop and I purchased a couple of patterns because with the red sparkly wool, I wanted something a bit of a more substantial cardigan. So I've chosen Hayfields um, and this is a double knitting. And I'm thinking of knitting this white one because, you know, I like a V-neck. And I've chosen this one as well. And this was knit. This is a patent, patterns, patterns, double knitting one. So I haven't quite made my mind up of which one I'm going to knit. I am airing towards this one. Because I think that will that pattern will really pick up those sparkles. So I'm hoping in a couple of weeks to start that. I also purchased some more wool. And again, it's one of my favourites. It's Bergère de France and it's a Parisian 7. And this will um, knit up on the 6.5. It's a chunky wool. And this colourway is called Rhinoceros. And I'll tell you what the composition is. It's 100% acrylic. But it's a really lovely. It's really soft. I really like this uh, Bergère. And it's the Brazilian 7. Yeah. And again, I've purchased this from Holly's Haberdashery. So I'm thinking... I might make another Gramps cardigan or I was thinking again of another Lisa Chemery design. I haven't quite made up my mind yet, um, but hopefully on the next vlog you'll see some progress. Okay, so now you might be wondering what my little display is here. So yeah, this is a cake, as you can see, a cake stand. And I just think it's full of glorious wool. Who needs cake when you can have wool? So this is all Stylecraft. And as you know, Stylecraft is 100% a, um, a acrylic wool. And it's um, a double knitting wool. Okay. And I've decided to make the Floralia, I've said it right, crochet blanket. Now this is a free pattern. Um, and you can obtain this, and I'll put the link down below, off a website called Pippin Poppycock. Now, she did very gener generously. Um, she released a section of the pattern each week, and I think it was July time. And also, if you are a beginner at crochet, or have never crocheted before, I urge you to go and have a look at this pattern, because... Helen Shrimpton from Crystals and Crochet is actually doing a crochet along on YouTube. So if you do section one, say round one, which I think so many sections, um, 
you can then go to that vlog uh, video sorry and Helen talks you through each round okay so there's I think there's eight sections and there's eight accompanying um, YouTube videos by Helen so she takes you all the way through there is also um, instructions with this um, Floria blanket um, there's instructions PDF which you can download and there's pictures also in the PDF to help you um, with your crochet pattern so let me show you I'm um, on I'm just about to start round three actually and I thought you know I won't do any more until I've shown you uh, my progress so far so this is the flower so we start off with a lovely popcorn stitch which Helen re shows you in great detail how to do and then we have the flower petals so this is a cream this shade is called tomato this shade is vintage peach apricot so then you just go in the round and then we get to the outer edge and this one this green here is called Lincoln and this one I think it's storm blue so that's how far I got so I'm on the third section now so from what I can see you just keep going round and round and then I think we square off at some point but I've really enjoyed making this so far it's been real fun the one thing I would suggest is that if you are going to make this is that you read instruction carefully and then watch Helen even if you think yes I know what I'm doing um, I have found I've made a couple of mistakes and had to rip it back because I haven't watched Helen's instruction so that's the floral the floralia and i've put all the colors here that you can see so i did purchase these online i think i i can't remember but i'll put the link in down below where i purchased and I, the majority of the wool from now there are four colorways that pippin poppycock suggests and this colorway is the the colorway is the Lillian colorway which Helen Shrimpton actually uses in her tutorials so <clears throat> this is a lovely cream and like I say this is the vintage peach and I'll read my display now I'll bring them up a little bit closer so you can actually see these colors so this is the cream and the vintage peach and what I've got on it there black speck apricot vintage apricot and this colorway is called tomato now the vintage oh the this green here is called Lincoln I did have a style craft green just a shade darker but I decided no I would go with what they actually suggested and then the storm blue and then the last one I haven't used yet and this is called mocha what I like about um, crocheting blankets because you, you know I always crochet a blanket in acrylic because it's it's hard wearing okay so what I like about crocheting blankets is that you're using different colors so it's never boring you just can't wait to start your next round <coughs> excuse me so that is the floralia I have noticed some comments where people have said their flowers are tending to stick up and Helen suggests you just tap them down with a little stitch at the end so that little light a little flatter 
but um, like I say, I'm, I'm loving doing this. So each time I vlog, I'll show you my progress. So the floralia. And I'm crocheting this on a four millimeter crochet hook. So the last thing I need to show you is a finished object and it's a quilt. Quite a long time ago, and it was quite a few vlogs back actually, I was making a quilt and I was using what's called the railroad fence pattern. And it was a honey bun I'd bought oh, quite a long time ago. I think it was from one of the quilt festivals, one of the shows. So a honey bun basically is like a jelly roll it's just strips of one and a half uh, one and a half wide strips of fabric and this color range if i remember rightly i can't remember the name of the range but it's by um fig tree company and i tend to like their color ranges i've got a lot of different um, fabrics by fig tree so I added in some of my own fabric. Uh, this green one was one. Um, and this colour here. It's like honey colour with the white spots. So I could get quite a big quilt out of the honey bun. Because like I say I added some of my own fabrics to it. And this is another fabric I had what well, I've done the border in this is also from fig tree quilts and I think this one was called some fresh cotton so um, yeah I've done the railroad fence is one of my favorites because it's so easy to do you just basically sew the strips together and square them off and then lay them in a different sort of pattern so this one goes this way and this one goes that way. And uh, so you lay them in alternating pattern. So yeah, um, let's have a look. I'll just put my mic out the way. Let's see if I can show you a little bit more. What I will do is I'll light on my bed and then you can see the quilt in all its glory. So I have backed it with just some ordinary white cotton. And I quilted on my sewing machine, a free motion quilting that is. And I just did, you know, the usual sort of, show you the back. I quilted it in like a squiggle pattern. I forgot what it's called now. It's just like meandering. Um, and it's quite a relaxing way of quilting where you just, um, I usually put my quilting gloves on and sit there and I meander freehand um, the quilting. So I quite enjoy doing that. And what I did is I picked sort of like, if I bring it up a bit close, you can see, I chose sort of like a bronzy gold colored thread to quilt with and I've completed it by binding in this green fabric which I had um, already which I've tied in as you can see with the quilt blocks. I was a little bit naughty and I haven't <laughs> quilted the borders but I just thought they looked rather nice as they were, to be honest. So, and I hand sewed the quilt into the back because I think that is the neatest way of binding a quilt. I do do the flange binding sometimes, but sometimes I enjoy a little bit of hand sewing. So that's what I did. So I'm going to show you now what the quilt looks like on my bed.
So I don't know what to do with this quilt. I don't know whether to put it in my folksy shop or not. But um, yeah, I've just got to make a decision on that as I've got that many quilts. So I've been quite good. Um, I've tried not to buy too much this month. Um, I'm trying to have a little rule now where we look at um, a four to one. So that's one acquisition in and four out because I need to get some of my stash down. However, I've been watching a vlog. Um, I've only just recently sub subscribed. Excuse me, got an itch. Um, her name is Jeanette and it's called C The Crafty Cleggs or Crafty Cleggs. I'll put a link in down below. And I've really enjoyed watching Jeanette. So all last week I was actually jamming on her, feasting on her vlogs and just watching them from the very beginning when she first started. And I went right through Vlogmas and to present day. So... <laughs> She showed, um, she tends to make a lot of toys and she actually showed um, a pattern for what's called a Tilda mouse. Now I've heard of Tilda fabrics, I've never ever quilted with them and I've heard of the Tilda toys, what you can make, the dolls and everything, but I've never really had the, the impetus to make one. But she showed this mouse and I thought that was really lovely. And each Christmas, what I like to do is I like to make all my grandchildren an advent calendar each. Yes, I've got five grandchildren. I've got another one due in four weeks time. So that's really exciting. Um, we don't know what we're having yet. So I'm holding back a little bit with the knitting and the quilting because, you know, I think sometimes um, you get a little bit fed up addressing a baby in gender neutral, what they call gender neutral nowadays, don't they? Um, but, you know, I'm old fashioned, so I can't wait to see what gender the baby is because I'll be either knitting in blue or pink. And the same with quilting. But... Um, I th going back to the advent calendars, I am trying to wrap my brains about what to put in the advent calendars for little gifts. So watching Jeanette has given me lots and lots of ideas. And this Tilda mouse looked so pretty. I just thought, oh, that would look lovely in the Tilda fabrics. So I went to Holly's Aberdashery. And they actually bought these fat quarters. And just look at those lovely colours. I really like. Oh, I just, I can't wait. I mean, even if I don't use them all up for the mouth, I can make a lovely project uh, bag. And this one is called Maple Farm. And there's five fat quarters. And I purchased those for £16.50. And I think this is the Rose Hip colourway. So I didn't think that was bad at all, really. Um, Sarah, who owns Holly's Aberdashery, she's very good at putting little fat quarter bundles together. And uh, when you go in, it's a real cornucopia. You just, oh. It's mind-blowing when you see all the little bundles together because they're absolutely beautiful. So I've bought bundles off her before, uh, but this is the first time I've ever bought the Tilda. So when you look at them, they're absolutely gorgeous. So I've decided to make a Tilda mouse and Jeanette had signposted us to a page. It was the, the Tilda website and there's some free patterns on there. And I thought, well, can't grumble at that. So this afternoon I'm going to download the pattern for the mouse. I know I should be getting on with this dress, but I'm so tempted to make the mouse first. 
So what I intend to do is I might actually do a vlogmas this time and um, each time I make an advent present and I wrap it up I will do a short clip of it and uh, yeah I can include it in the vlogmas but I can't wait to make this mouse and I also purchased a yard of Kona fabric this is a white and a lovely green I forgot what the green was called now I think it's like a vintage green but I've got some hexes and I thought I bought this green so that um, these would be used sporadically throughout the quilt for the leaves so I thought I'd make some hexagon flowers and make the leaves and some more hexagons in the white and uh, start sort of sewing those hexagons together so it's going to be another busy month for November um, so I've got quite a few knitting projects to do complete the floralia blanket well get some sections done and uh, yeah complete the dress and uh, see how this Tilda mouse turns out with these beautiful fabrics so it's going to be another busy month for November um, so I've got a, quite a few knitting projects to do complete the floralia blanket well get some sections done and uh, yeah complete the dress and uh, see how this Tilda mouse turns out with these beautiful fabrics so until next time uh, happy crafting please if you've watched this video give it a like so that I get some interaction and subscribe if you haven't already until next time bye